My name is Kiko. I'm part of the music team here at Google YouTube, and um, I'm excited to be here today. We have a special guest for you guys today, um, a gentleman by the name of Sparsh, who has inspired so many throughout the world um, through his music as well as his philanthropic work with cancer research and children with disabilities and earthquake victims, etc. cetera. Um, and he's going to perform for us today. So without further ado, Sparsh. Thank you. Tear the thought apart of the 
once in a lifetime, yo. You can do anything you set your mind to, man. Keep clapping. It's not over yet, ready? Now comes the fun part. Everybody, give it up for him once again. Thank you so much. Is there a way to turn this off so that, oh, okay, it's off. <laughs> well, you Googlers are always one, a few, at least a few steps ahead. <laughs> it's always what my dad told me when we used to play chess. Like, always think a couple of steps ahead. You guys are way ahead. <laughs> well, well, first, I just want to thank you for, for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me here. Absolutely. It's amazing. Um, so I guess my first question is, I guess, when, at how, like, how old were you when you first, uh, I guess, realized your love for music, I guess? Um, the great thing about that is, um, for me, music, it's, it's been with me all along. It's like, we, I, it's not like I grew into music. Music grew with me. Like... It's, it's the deepest part of my soul. Yet it's like we were two childhood friends that grew up in the same neighborhood and we always knew each other. And I was exposed to music ever since I was little. So that's the great thing because I got to learn. I would hum every song on my, that my family played in the car. I would start singing, ultimately started correcting my parents. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I, it was crazy. Like, I, st I started with piano, actually. I... You know, broke my arms a lot, broke my legs a lot because of my condition. But, um, you know, that, that really, my mom told me that no matter how many bones you broke in your life, your voice would never break. So I realized, you know, yeah, I may be here um, with like 130 fractures in my life now. I had 40 coming out of the womb, but my vocal cords, like my voice never broke. So that's basically why I became a singer and not necessarily an instrumental musician. That's like my main focus. Well, that's, that's good advice, Mom, that the voice will, will never break. So thank you for that. Um, my next question is just you, you, you touched on, you know, some of the things you've endured um, health-wise. So I guess my question is how did you keep uh, your motivation up to do some of the things that you've been doing wow. regardless um, of everything else? For me, that's three. Uh, I have... My, my motivation comes from, I mean, really, it comes from everybody. So you all here, I'm just letting you know, you are my motivation. And I really mean that by the heart when I say it. So thank you. Thank you for that. So that's the thing. Like, uh, for me, it comes from three places. My fans, my friends and my family, and God. I mean, my fans, they've been my global support system. They've been with me everywhere through my musical journey. And I've been able to help them out, too. So it's not just them supporting me. It's me supporting them with my music and my message. I've been so blessed to have inspired so many people and show them, you know, it doesn't matter what you go through. It matters where you want to get to, you know. And doing that is great for me and my, for, for my fans. Like, for me to tell my fans that and for them to get that message, it's great. Um, my friends and my family, I mean, obviously... My fans are my biggest support system, but my family is like my longest running support system. They knew me since I was born. So it, it's, you know, they've always, they, I, I, without them, I would not have been gently raised to be the child I am today. Um, and the values that they gave me, they imbibed into me, it was, oh my God, it was crazy. It, it's, 
values, the values that they gave me. Without that, I wouldn't have been the strong, resilient teenager that I am today. And I definitely wouldn't have gone out to the world and showcased my talent. And uh, most importantly, I believe my greatest strength comes from God. He's there with me wherever I go, wherever I am, and what, no matter what. And, you know, every day I wake up and I always thank God for giving me another day of life because, number one, he could easily take it away from me. Every breath, I believe every breath we take is by his grace. Me coming out with 40 fractures in the womb, I mean, I know you're probably thinking, what is this kid talking about with all these fractures? I have osteogenesis imperfecta, which is brittle bone disease um, in layman's terms. And I've suffered many fractures through my life, many surgeries. And with those 40 fractures, some of the biggest surgeries I've gone through, I had a spinal fusion in August, all that. I honestly think that without God's grace, I wouldn't have been here today. So I always thank him for giving me another day because he could have given it. He could have taken it away from me in an instant. He could take it away from me right now if he wanted to. But the fact that he didn't and he's letting me live is just saying, your fight's not over, son. You're going to fight for me. I know you're going to fight for me. So that's why I wake up every day. And I think if we all open our eyes and live like that, that's the greatest sense of purpose we could ever have in our life. Period. So in just knowing part of your story, there's been a lot of high points that I've read through. But what do you, what do you feel like has been your, your best or happiest moment so far in the, the journey that you've been wow, on? Wow, that's crazy. Definitely Google is one of my happiest moments. <laughs> Well, yeah. thank you. <laughs> of course. Um, yeah, that, I mean, I've had a lot of performances, but that's the thing. I don't let my biggest performance define my success. Mm -hmm. I'm not the kind of guy that says, yo, okay, I performed at Madison Square Garden, UN headquarters, Google, um, Deloitte, all this stuff. Yeah, I performed in all of those, but that doesn't define me. What defines me, honestly, is my, my best achievement. I think my biggest achievement is just every time I've been able to touch someone's heart. That has become my biggest achievement because what's the point of going out? Like, my dream is to sing, in, one of my dreams is to sing in front of a billion people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, billion. I mean, it's doable, right? But if I don't, if no, what's the point of singing in front of a billion people if nobody's really gonna hear you? If nobody's actually gonna listen? So that's why I say that it doesn't matter about what I did as an artist, what, matter, what matters is who I touched as an artist. Got you. And, and it's, it's also obviously you, you've done, you know, a lot of covers of Eminem and, you know, and stuff like that. But I guess my question is, what artists inspire you just in general? Um, that's that, I mean, there's a few, actually. Mm -hmm. Obviously, since I um, came across Not Afraid, yeah. Eminem was like my favorite artist. And I I mean, I he has such a great lyrical genius. I love that. His story is great. Um, and I think actually he was the one, I had been exposed to hip hop. I realized as I look back over the years more slowly and slowly until I got to him, but I always avoided the mainstream industry because I thought, oh man, it's so bad. All these people talking about bad things and mm -hmm. all that. But I think Eminem was really the rapper who showed me that you could be in the industry and you don't have to rap about that stuff. You could, there, hip hop is not always bad. It can be used for good. It's not the devil's music as they would say. Well, you can you can take a rhythm and just rap over a beat, and you could make the most inspirational message. But I think, like, as I got further, I discovered some other artists. I remember before I came to Eminem, I always I used to listen to Maddie B. Raps, mm -hmm. really awesome YouTube sensation and rapper. Um, few other rappers, they're like these two rappers I'm huge fans of. Uh, Menista, he's a gospel rapper, and also D1, he's like a mix between gospel and conscious rap. So, and I love, my favorite part about him is that he doesn't let go of his values and he will not bend. Like he won't do something that he knows is like, he won't sacrifice something greater for like one opportunity. I love his motto, it's like, it's called threes up. So be real, be righteous and be relevant. And I think every rapper needs to live up to that because we're living in an industry right now that is barely real, mm. definitely not righteous, and I mean, only a little relevant, mm. if anything. So I wanna be one of those guys that 
really lives up to that. Actually, and, and also, like, you know, you mentioned, I think a lot of people have a love for music very early on. But I guess for you, at what point did you realize that this was really going to be a thing, like something that was very important in your life? Um, yeah, ever since, ever since I was little. Yeah. I had known it ever since I was little. And that was the great thing. My, it was my dream always to inspire. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't have to, I wasn't following another dream. Like, I'm going to make these records. I'm going to do this money. I'm going to, I'm going to get this money. I'm going to buy this stuff, get rich and all. And I'm going to sing in live tours. That was byproducts. Really, it, the, the main dream that I had was to inspire everyone in the world. Singing in front of a billion people was just like a vehicle to do that now that I look back on it. And that's why I always say I want to sparse people's hearts. Sparse, my name actually means touch, to touch. So I just sparsed my left hand. <laughs> so in that way, that's what I want to do. I want to sparse people's hearts. And, and all the people that, you know, you've touched and spoken with and, and had an opportunity to meet, was there a specific message that you've gotten from anyone that specifically touched you through all your journeys? Ooh, that's a tough one. Mm. Um, hmm, a specific message, like a message that really struck me. Um, ooh, man, you got me there. <laughs> I think, honestly, the biggest messages I'd ever gotten were from my parents. Mm. I mean, I got so many, I got so much encouragement from everyone that I, I had met with and like, I mean, that I met with as through my performance journey and everything. Mm. But my mom and dad, they were the ones that really kept me, they kept me grounded. They um, showed me my purpose. They showed me who I really could be, who I was and who I could be. And so they always picked me up. They were like, you know, a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of people with disabilities, they'll get, um, I mean, now times are changing, but a lot of people with disabilities, they're not really that recognized because of their disability. But that's what I like to say. I like to diss my disability. <laughs> I diss my disability. <laughs> so that's the that's the thing. So my parents always gave me that attitude. If you can believe it, you can achieve it. And I really took that to heart. And I think that's the reason why I'm here today. That message is the reason why I'm able to go out and sing in front of 20 to 30,000 people. And technically, I'm talking in front of millions, if not billions of people, because this is going to go out to the world. Yeah. So without that i probably without that attitude and without that outlook on life i definitely would have been would not have been able to come here so boldly on stage and be able to do that and now what is your process for creating music oh wow glad you asked um so um usually when i was when i was little i used to um like when i was yeah, when I was little and I started writing songs, the first song I wrote was at the age of 10. That was This Love Will Never Fade. And I didn't know how to make music. I was really bad at composing. I'm still, I still suck at the piano. <laughs> but, um, you know, I didn't know how to make music like that. And so I would try and try and it never works. But I would always like write down songs first. I'd write down a song first and then I would try, frustratingly try to come up with a piano tune. And then, Time kept going on. Sometimes I would find really good beats online, especially when I started making rap songs and I got fell in love with rap. I'd start, I'd listen to the beat, make a song out of it. And then I realized that, you know, I'd written so many songs and I tried going out to people, you know, who could record me, but everyone who I knew was really busy. So I said, you know what? I have to do it on my own. It's like a doer, it was like a do or die thing because you gotta move fast. And so I had, I was like, you know, I have to make my own music. If nobody's going to do it and make my music for me and nobody's going to help record it, I need to get the tools that I need to do that. I got a recording set for Christmas one day. I don't remember how many years ago that was, probably a few years ago. And I got that done. I started writing um, and I started making music. So in fact, I have a MacBook. I mean, I can show you something. That'd be great. 
Okay, let's do this. Okay, so, y'all ready? I'm going to teach you guys how to make a simple beat. You ready for this? Yeah. Okay, so, um, if you, we could turn up the screen, please. All right, here we are. I'm using the cute little GarageBand software. I know everyone uses Logic and Pro Tools and stuff, but um, I'll show you this track later. But let's make a new project. All right, now I'm going to do this completely random. Okay, ready? You could ran, you could yell out anything you want. I, I don't even mind. All right, ready? Um, what key do you want the song to be? It could be like, it's. I think it's from, yeah, it's A to like all the way to G sharp. What, what key do you want? Yell out a number. Wait, what? E flat. E flat, okay. E flat. It's T sharp. E flat, okay. Major, minor. Minor. Tempo. 140. 140. Okay. Time signature. Oh. You know what? I'll just stick with the 4-4. Four four. It's easier, you know? I'm sticking with 4-4. Four four. All right. 140 E flat. All right. Let's do this. I'm going to try it. So I'm not going to use any audios or drummers. I'm just going to do software instruments. So... Somebody like, somebody just like give me a good, anybody a good beatboxer here? You don't even have to be that good, like just. All right, give me a beat. Give me a beat, like. Okay. Okay, I got this, I got this, ready? So what you're gonna do is you go like, um, I'm gonna go to the old garage band instruments because I love to start with that. Drum kits, hip hop. Watch this, ready? It's called musical typing. It's so cool. See, like, there's all these different instruments. Boom. All right, so we're gonna start with that beat, ready? Okay, so now all I gotta do is you go here, you quantize the music so that it's on beat. Okay, there it is. So now, what you can do is you could layer extra stuff on this. So it's really cool. So this is the this is the basic beat. That's the metronome, right? So now watch. Cool, right? So like something like that, and then you could go to the piano. So you could record that. It's really cool, because then you can come up with really cool tunes. I'll show you some. No, don't say. <laughs> OK, so this is, um, this is an instrumental I made. It's really cool. Ready? snippet of an instrumental and I just made this song no don't save um, <laughs> I'm always clicking don't save <laughs> it's funny um, uh, now this is a song that I just actually composed like two days ago and I have the lyrics to it so you could even read that all right ready it's like my intro song so like before I release all my other songs this is like yo world this is me so I came up with this after some pretty hard work, took me a very long time to make, mm -hmm. but, and this is like basic, I don't even, like I'm still learning mixing and mastering, like that stuff, I'm just really just piecing music, to get music together. So this is what I've come up with. 
Ye are gods, but ye shall die like men. And no, I'm not a king, my voice will ring a prince with the power of pen. So in the pages of history written, I will go forth and down, take my wheels in the ground, so not even waves will have smitten. Yeah! For everybody who wants to know the real artist, person behind the Eminem covers, this is me. Pure rhythm. Now here I am through all the struggle. Clear my dams from all the rubble. Rose up from the wounds that I took. These got so much boom, you'll be shook. Move around faster than a castle in rook. Shine a god's light through a tranny and nook. Read that book, cause I'm writing my pages. Beats getting hard as I'm fighting these stages. Move readers, it's like they were moved by the ghost. Stories been written by the pen with the most. Put throughout the world and the coast to coast. Never boast though, never go slow. Yo, I may be learning, I yet I'm great, but I'm burning. I'm frilling at a lactic acid state. Not with your tires, but fires themselves. I'm carving my own path and that I'm what's up. But I'm flowing like water, my fire gets harder than. Let me try that again. <laughs> it's gonna get better, ready? Yo, rap flowing like water, my fire gets out of our car, just got hotter, raves, we said no butter, clean hip hop, just started the rock, I rap harder, and poetry, daughter, music is my father, cause this is only inception, hip hop's running succession, I'm here to help reclaim a lost kingdom, faded in regression, so here arrives the next day, just separate the weed from the tear, I'ma stay bold and I won't be scared, but even in my light, I'm remembering my prayers. And that's like part of it. Round of applause, everyone. Thank you for that. Of course. Um, so oh, right. I'm using this mic. <laughs> Um, I guess my question is, obviously, you've done a lot of creating for yourself. Like, who is your dream to, obviously, you record, you're making tracks and you're making beats. Is it your dream to have someone else, I guess, record to your tracks as well? And if so, who would be your dream to have someone record to any of your tracks? Ooh, um, honestly, yeah, I would definitely love to, you know, have, like, to work with others to produce my tracks. You know, I've never really had any anybody in mind for that. But, you know, hey, if anybody's out there and you're <laughs> watching this, I know, I mean, this is Google, right? Anything's possible. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm free. If you guys, <laughs> if you guys wanna, if you guys want some of my music to be like there, you know, to produce some stuff, I'm totally ready for it. Nope. So, yeah. What about artist-wise to record say to your tracks? Artist-wise. Artist-wise. Wow. Mm. Definitely, I think on ever since Not Afraid, it was definitely my dream to perform with Eminem. Okay. So if I, I mean, I, that's just performing. But if we got to do something studio-wise, that would be pretty cool too. I mean, I'm totally ready for that. That'd be dope. Um, so, guys, we're gonna play a cool game. Um, a memory game. Can we get some volunteers? I'm not going to say what it is because I don't want to scare you all off just yet, but a memory game we're going to play here with uh, with Sparsh. Can we get some volunteers, please? We have two mics set up at two sides of the room. Come on, guys. This don't need Google. to be scared. Everybody's oh, yeah. Great. Let's yes. go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can we get another volunteer, Anyone please? from this side? Anyone from this side? Step up. You don't have to be scared. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, so... Um, the game that we are going to play today, so Sparsh is, uh, uh, is, a, is a master at the numbers of pi. He's memorized a significant way down the line. I, I, I'm not even close, so we're not going to even talk about what I can do. But uh, we're going to play a little game and see if uh, this is Google, right? So we have a lot of great minds in the room. Um, we're going to see if anybody can go back and forth with him with the numbers of pi that he knows. <laughs> that you guys know. This should be fun. This should be fun. This should be fun. So uh, I guess, it, you, do you want to start off? Who wants to start off here? Um, three. <laughs> huh? I'll start with three. I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, do you want to, like, do you, could you, I mean, do you have any more? <laughs> <laughs> 3.145? Almost. One five. Oh, one five. Ah. Don't worry, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, you're not out. You ready? <laughs> Try uh, your best. Try your best. Uh, question is, can I Google it? <laughs> um, I, that I, I would leave to Mr. Kiko. Yeah. Listen, I, however you want to beat, try to beat this man. However you I would say, you know to. what? Let's try doing this. You have the stuff on the wall. 
take like a few seconds to memorize it as much as you can, right? And then we do like a face off. Okay. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes. Let me know when you're ready. You ready? Okay, I'm ready. Okay, let's do this. Okay, 3.14159265. And that's it. Okay. Good job. You ready? Yeah, 3.14159265. You lose me there. Good job. Nice. Don't look at me. You beat us? <laughs> me? All right. This is my humble attempt. <laughs> no, no way. It's, look, it's good, right? It's all in good fun. So that's the great thing. All right. 3 3.14159265358979326534368326789530 Eight two one three three nine three six zero seven two six zero two four nine one four one two seven three seven two four five eight seven zero zero six six zero six three one five five eight eight. Um, that's all I got right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Amazing. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Um, yeah. Um. Right. Actually, wait up, might want to stay there. I have awesome gifts for you. <laughs> yes, for being such valiant warriors in the pie game. If you guys want to come on up. Oh God. Thank you. Of course. Bada bing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so now, now we, I wanted to open it up for questions. If any of you guys have any questions for Sparsh, um, feel free to feel ask. Feel free. Mike's in both corners over here. So nobody wants to know anything else about me. <laughs> <laughs> that is odd, especially in a building of technology, like so, like such great minds all assembled here, and the world's greatest technology. Okay, right, yeah, right. we got somebody. Okay. Um, I was wondering if you could just talk a little bit about uh, how you use technology and how that helps you. You've demonstrated, obviously, with, you know, music creation, but I know, yeah, I mean, you have a large YouTube following. Just how do you interact with, you know, computers, mobile devices, uh, those types of things to help you uh, with your daily activities? Ooh, um, that way I would take into two, I would break down into two things. Um, first one, two words, social media. It's, uh, the second one would be um, education. I mean, because like now, you know, we got like Google Classroom, Google Docs, Google Drive, all that stuff. And we use, like, I don't know, like, what what you guys are thinking, like, if about, about the Google Drive Classroom and stuff, but like, we're using it. It's great. That it's, it's a really great platform. We get to use it for like keeping our classes up to date and all that, so like, for example, if I need to look up an assignment and my teacher has a Google Classroom thing, all I gotta do is go on my phone app and just click it. It's so efficient the way you guys have made it. So first of all, thanks for that. And second of all, the social media. I mean, I'm, I've been pretty active on social media. I got, I mean, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and YouTube. So I'm trying, you know, it's like me trying to build my base so that's a great thing, and I'm able to use social media to reach people from all over the world. So that's a great thing, because if I did not have that ability, right, like if we were back in the old days and like um, we didn't have like that kind of 
um, ability. Like it would take years for a message to travel by sea or boat or whatever the case may have been, even through telegrams and telegraphs. Like now we have an ability to send a text to someone right across the world in like one click to live stream things, right? Which I know you probably guys are like specialized at Mm -hmm. because you guys are like so awesome with that field. But, you know, that's the great thing about social media and technology is that I get to reach so much more people than I really could have if I was in the old days. And that's why I feel like my one billion people dream is really realistic in my eyes because I know I can do it with the technology I have. Thank you. Oh, what's your name? I'm Matt. Mac, Mr. Mac. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. And the other awesome yeah, the other awesome young lady who competed with me in the pie game. What was your name? My name's Emery. M- Miss Emery. Nice. Mr. Mac and Mr. Emery. Okay. I will do my best to remember that. I think we have another question. Yeah. Oh, uh, sure. Hey, I'm curious what what uh what you, what you like in school? Like are, are you in school now and what subjects do you like and the, Obviously, you must be pretty amazing at math and numbers. Thank you. And, and also, like, so what you're good at, what you're interested in, and like, how much time you spend with music and balance that with school. Wow, very good question. Thank you. Your name? I'm Jeremy. Mr. Jeremy. All right. So I think um, I love music. Uh, like, and even as a school subject, my favorite class would definitely be music. Anything to do with that, even if it's instrumental music. Because it's like... Oh my God, it's crazy. The connections that that music has, the connection that music has with us as human beings and us as a core, um, in our core, it it's it's amazing. Like music can make someone make someone vent, it can make someone cry, it can make someone laugh, make someone smile all at the same time. And that I think is very, very powerful. And I, in a way, all art is like that, you know what I mean? Every art tells a story in a different form. And um, the way I mostly balance music in school, like music in school life, it's, I must say, it's a very challenging task. But the main way I just try to do it is take it one day at a time, you know? Take it a minute, day at a time, because then I can really break it down and say, yo, I don't have to worry about tomorrow. And that's, I, I definitely, you keep in mind tomorrow, but you don't worry about it. And that really helps because that takes off a lot of stress. And when I'm going through the motions of doing my homework and stuff and trying to finish it as fast as I can so that I can do my music stuff. So, yeah, I try my best to spend as much time with music as I can. And sometimes it may not work out, but it's an everlasting, you know, seesaw and that I just got to work out the right weight to. Thank you. Oh, oh, do you have something else? Or? Oh, okay. Hi. Hi. My name is Kat. Um, I want to know what inspires you to write music. What and maybe you can also talk a little bit about what your big dream is of what impact you want your music to have. Wow, that's a great one. Um, I think for me, um, music, I almost every song that I've written in my life it's it's been it's come from like real stories in my life basically i tell people that if you were to take my songs and put them in the order they were the exact order they were written they spell the story of my life because the way i when i write all the that's like my venting place i can vent out the deepest feelings that i have the emotions that i have and what i'm going through and so it becomes like a chron- uh, like like a chronicle of some sort. Like when you look at the songs and you're like, oh, this is what Sparsh was going through when he wrote this. Oh, now this is what Sparsh is going through. He moved on from this. Now he's in something different. And that's really what helped. That's what, that's what I know. Like that's how I get inspired um, to write music. And I think the biggest effect I want my music to have is just to inspire people that, you know what, no matter what you're going through, what obstacles you have, if you can believe it, you can achieve it. Nothing's impossible. If, um, like I said in my TED talk, if I could turn impossible into I'm possible, you could too. So yeah. Hey, Sparsh, thank you for being here. This was a, a, it's a real pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Um, 
and for performing for us and all that. I, I do have a question for you, which is you're like a relentlessly positive person, which is amazing. Like you managed to find, you know, positivity in, in so many things. Um, do you ever uh, get down? What, what what gets you down? What's what's the like if you if you feel comfortable sharing with us? Cause sometimes, I, I like as an artist, you. does that ever? Does, does that ever, like, uh, inspire you? Do, you? do you find something in your art to... to yeah. Do you want to talk about that ever? Of course. I definitely do. Um, thank you for asking that question. And that's the great thing about us as human beings is that we may... Like, that's the thing. We look positive. We always try to look positive on the outside, but we have to realize that um, we have to let people be vulnerable sometimes because there are... We all get down. Simple, simply put, we all get down, right? And usually what I told Miss Cat, right, was that when I'm writing songs, often it comes from very dark and sad moments in my life. Like, as I'm going through them, that's my vent. Like, I, a lot of times I'm going through situations where I, I really wouldn't, instead of talking to someone about it, I would write a song about it. Because in that way, I could express my feelings to the world. And, like, I could express my feelings to myself. And that's the ironic thing, because even though I don't want to talk to somebody at the moment, I know that I'm going to release this and everyone's going to hear it in the world. But that's the great thing, because if there's even one person out there who says, oh, my God, that is exactly what I'm going through. Or I understand his pain. I know where he's coming from. Then it just... That's all I ever wanted to do as an artist. If I could, God bless you. Um, mm. If I could change someone's life like that and show them the positive side of everything that I went through and they know what I've been through, that's, that's it. That's my ultimate goal. Thanks. Mm. Of course. I think we have one more question. Hi, Sparsh. Thank you very much for, for, for everything you, you, you showed us today. Uh, it was inspiring and, and, and super cool as well. I have a very simple technical question. Uh, so memorizing the, the, the digits of pi, so it sounded like uh, you were actually approaching this through, through music as, 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 uh, as with everything else in your life, basically. It's so core as a, as a filter. So is that safe to assume that you basically memorize it as, as a set of lyrics? It, yeah, I rapped pi. That's literally what I did. I rapped pie. You hit the nail on the head. So, you know, that's that's the that's the great thing about like mnemonic devices. I I learned pie through the song Pie by Hard and Firm, but they only had like the first 191 digits. And so after that, I needed to keep on going. <laughs> but then I was like, you know, it's like every bar has eight digits. So I'm like, um, for example, um, Three point one four one five nine two six five three five eight nine seven nine three two three eight four six two six four three three eight three two seven nine. Well, that was the odd one out, but that's how I learned pi. I kept on going with that. So even after the song ended, I just kept on pretending that the song was going on, that it would infinitely loop, and that way I just kept thinking about it. And then that's when I realized. I could use this as a great and powerful tool. Like I could use music to remember all these great these things in my life. So it was it, it's, it's it was a pretty cool experience learning it. Pretty cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Your name? I'm Balint. Say that again. Balint. It's B A L I N T. Balint. Yes. Balint. Okay. I'm trying my best. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. Thank you. Thank you all for your questions, and I want to say thank you, Sparsh, for being here today. Thank you.